plunder. Janine Driver over here at the Profiler Task Force, PTF. I, I can't even tell you. I was up till I think three o'clock in the morning because we kept getting dings of people following our page. You sent them to us. I watched the, I think it's 18 minute video you did highlighting us. We love women cheering on women. We love people who are pursuing truth. And uh, we just, I want to personally thank you uh, as a mom of three sons. And I love having a mom of three boys. It's great to be around women who do not get threatened by other powerful women. So you're making a difference in the world, sister. So a big thank you from me over here. And I live in Alexandria, Virginia, but I'm driving right now into Delaware. So a big hello around the world to Delaware for our followers of Profile Task Force. Please follow Plunder. She's amazing. Susan, over to you, sister. Hi, Paula. Thank you very much here from Chicago and Indiana. Like Janine says, it's so amazing to see women empower and other women. That's the reason this show is start because uh, we get together to show that we don't, we can do it. Uh, we can do the show. We can, we, we can go deep. We can be a badass and get it out. And it's so amazing to see another badass lady like you empower us. So thank you. Like Janine says, I think I was until four o'clock in the morning <laughs> checking pins and, and, and followers. So thank you very much. Back to you, Michelle. Hi, thank you, Poa. Thank you, thank you. We really appreciate your help. And as a little thank you present, if you want to send me your handwriting, I will analyze you. So again, thank you. Thank any all of your viewers for watching us. Profile our task force. We really appreciate it. And to you, Lena. Hi, Paula. I am coming from Norfolk, Virginia and Virginia Beach area. And I just want to tell you a very heartfelt thank you. You didn't have to do that. And you did it. And you're empowering us. And in turn, we want to empower you. And we just are so appreciative. So the best from all of us. Janine. Yes. We love you. Thank you, Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I've got to thank Lynn Scalzidi for letting me know about a new video for YouTube creators that are profiling experts have gotten together and they've recently covered the Suzanne Morphew case. And so they cover everything from Suzanne's bangs, their faces, Barry Morphew's hand movements, handwriting analysis, um, his words, his movements. Now this is who I've been teasing you about. <laughs> I had to make sure I had the right links. So please go check out Profiler Task Force. I watched them last night. It's great. They have this video that's a little bit over an hour long. Um, apparently they will create new content at least every Wednesday. I'm not sure of if it's more often than that, but you have these four experts who have a lot of media experience or handwriting analysis experience. If you watch the video and go subscribe, subscribe to them, you will learn all of their accomplishments. And I just found it fascinating. Sometimes you know how you're really into a specific case and you just want to talk to people about it. You want to bounce ideas off of them. You want to see if they notice any of the same things you do or things you haven't noticed or vice versa. So again, I'm going to link to them and encourage people to go watch it. First, really quickly, I want to explain why I like to introduce you guys to new YouTube creators or even, you know, in existence, I shouldn't say new, but maybe new on the scene. This guy's website, Robinson Training Solutions, kind of, kind of breaks it down. It reminds me of something I learned from author James Alch Altucher. I think that's how you pronounce it. A lot of you guys have probably heard of him. He wrote the book, Choose Yourself. This guy is great. I followed him for years. He's one of these... um financial guys who tells you the truth his story sticks out because he he'll, he'll tell you in a way that no other financial guru will speak to you he'll give you the real deal i'm bringing him up because it's a lesson that i learned from james years ago 
that sticks with me today where he encourages us to introduce others to each other even if if we get nothing out of it if we step out of it and I don't just mean in a way if you're hooking up two single people let's say you know you're matchmaking you you know a guy and a girl and like oh they'd be great together and hooking them up that way he encourages you to hook people up in terms of business deals or wherever in your life spiritually whatever if you meet someone and you think oh that person would really vibe with this person go ahead and introduce them you never know what'll happen that's why I'm introducing you to James if you don't already know him but I'm also introducing you to these other YouTube creators I had to look up what he said he has some of the best ideas he talks about giving credit even if the ideas were all yours even if you made nothing on them even if they were blatantly stolen give credit and move on hoarding your ideas for the moment when you can shine will only leave you by yourself in a dimly lit room with only a mirror to stare at it's like wow <laughs> his words have spoken to me for years he talks about being the source of ideas and don't worry about giving stuff away for free and all this stuff if you read the choose yourself book you know what I mean I can link to it below as well this is the part that I searched for James said introduce two people every day you can think of at least two people to introduce to each other who will help each other you don't have to be in the middle take me off of carbon copy you should say let them help each other let them benefit you don't need to be in the middle and benefit this time you'll benefit the next time or the time after so those are the parts of James and that's him the American author um, he was a hedge fund manager he's 52 apparently his stuff is really he's an entrepreneur angel investor he'll talk about his divorce he'll talk about I don't know drinking or depression or everything he's been through that's my point in introducing you to those profiling women if I run across someone I really just go wow you know I want to tell my viewers about them that's why I keep referencing people who are following the Morphew case and I think all of us have a unique perspective um, I like hearing all perspectives I especially like that we have this task force of women who are experienced who have a wealth of information who are able to view things I didn't see in Barry Morphew's face or they have me thinking about Suzanne Morphew's bangs they even have me thinking about a fresh set of eyes looking at this letter we know via the search for Suzanne Morphew uncensored discussion group that Tiffany Butala of the Poncha Market you know turned to the interwebs on May 24th she hadn't shared it with anybody yet but she posted the photo of the note that Barry Morphew wrote about Suzanne's alleged baby blue bike helmet and if you go over to I gotta keep remembering their name the um, profiler task force you will see how they interpret this note they really break it down um, you know why did Barry use the words baby blue what's this check mark about um, why did he write a K like this but wrote it differently almost X like when he wrote biker bikers clothing biking clothing what it means that he angled his G's as he did so much more go on over there I won't spoil it but it was so good to hear others analyze his handwriting and not only his handwriting the things he told Tyson Draper I will link to again Tyson Draper's original video conversation with Barry here if you guys want to go to this video I, I've linked to below where Barry says Suzanne and I are totally in love there was another analysis recently from someone who spoke about that qualifier you know Barry simply couldn't say and I wish I could remember who it was because you know I would credit them 
I've just I get so many mes messages all day and watch so much research about this case and others that it kind of all flows together. But someone noted that by Barry giving him a qualifier totally in love, he just couldn't even say, um, Suzanne and I are still in love or we're in love, you know, we love each other. He had to say, we're totally in love, you know, as if to make it seem so extreme that they were after 32 years, they're still totally in love, like newlyweds or something. If you watch this video, I've broken down, um, I've broken down even better what Barry says to Tyson in that video as much as I could. So if you go back and watch that, that'll help also with the analysis. Because the profiling task women, not only did they look at Barry's movements, you know, they looked at some of his hand movements and they even spoke about kind of this downward pointing thing he did. That's something I hadn't captured. They even compared it to Jody Arias's movements or her way of speaking and not really giving a direct answer sometimes. Um, they even talk about Barry and Suzanne's face and what it could mean. I wish they could um, see this initial hand movement over here, the one that Barry made. It was always a little odd to me. But they spoke about what it means that he might have been pointing around and pointing down. One thing I'd love to see them analyze is Barry's chopping movements. If you go watch Tyson's video, it's linked to again below, you'll see him making a lot of chopping movements, which seem uncomfortable to me. He speaks a lot with his hands, and he's a huge-looking man, and it just looks so intimidating to me. So what happened at this house? Well, we don't know. But the women analyze things such as Barry's face, and they even talk, of course, they have to give a look at this, his video plea. And it's so interesting towards the end how they speak about this part of his face and what it means, how he kind of, it's almost like a downward s smile. They didn't call it Duper's Delight. But it's kind of related to that. The one woman, she called it contempt. I'm pretty sure that was the word she used at the end. That part, going down. Contempt. I'm pretty sure that's what she called it. You'll have to go over there and see. But the explanations are very interesting. They even analyze uh, Barry's what it means, this large forehead, and his lip structure, his nose, his chin, comparing that to Suzanne's uh, openness, and Barry's kind of hooded eyes, and even his eyebrows, and uh, the fact that Suzanne liked to wear bangs often. And I went back through her photos and thought, wow, she did wear bangs a lot, and which is beautiful. I really love bangs. And I thought it was funny because I had just complimented uh, my friend's daughter on her bangs. She had a kind of new hairstyle. It looked great on her. So I think it looks great on Suzanne as well. One thing they theorized is wearing bangs. Could it have been almost like hiding behind your hair? Hiding your intelligence. What does it all mean? They're going to, at some point, I believe, they might have already done this, analyze Suzanne's handwriting, which will be interesting. Now, I've noticed in different photos, Suzanne sometimes wears kind of a long, side-swept bang, or not often her hair off of her face. Now, of course, that could be because women who've been through cancer who have um, experienced hair loss and we remember one of Suzanne's friends speaking to Lauren Scharf about you know hair loss or Suzanne changing and what that might have meant her fears of what that could have meant for her you know you have to dig through the archives for that one but of course a lot of women wear bangs 
um, if your hair is if you use enhancements or wigs or weaves or anything because it's easier to kind of hide your hairline that could have been one issue we don't know again I'm saying all this long rambling video to say that head on over to the profiling women give them a listen I think it's so critical to use all of our experience our paradigms our time to pick out clues that each one of us might not see until we collectively talk about it so give them a watch I think they were um, very good very entertaining in terms of what they were able to pick out and even comparing it to other cases like Jody Arias's case um, the case of I believe it was Ray Rice um, a lot of speech patterns using words like obviously and what they mean so go give it a listen Jeremiah 23 24 who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them declares the Lord do I not I'm sorry do not I fill heaven and earth declares the Lord we can rest assured with verses like this that even though certain things are hidden right now in secret places God knows all he fills heaven and earth and we will see what comes of this case take care